Hello, Hello and welcome to another episode of Stride Dialogue. Today our guest is Lieutenant General. Today our guest is Lieutenant General Vishal Singh, EVSM, EVSM, and in the absence of our permanent host, Vivekar Bhatia. I am standing up for him. And today, a very interesting topic we are going to discuss. The topic is information warfare. Now, conflict is normally defined as common. There is a very, very identifiable aggressor is there, and there is a very, very identifiable defender is there. However, in recent times, situation appears to be changing. Most of the conflicts are in a gray zone where aggressor may many a times may not be identified. Many a times a benign event snowballs into a major crisis. One of the major sources of such as such as deterioration in the situation is social media, where an unknown or someone who This masquerades as someone, simulates a discussion, which degenerates into a conflict, which in itself is not physical, but could be psychological, and creating disaffection. Such a narrative building can only be summed up as an intuition. Source of Generally, are could be internal or external. I mean, some of the examples are Black Lives Matter started with a very benign event where someone was kind of offended by police and degenerated into a major conflict between blacks and the rest of the U.S. Similarly, in India, CA agitation. Save constitution are direct outcome of all such warfare. It's a great honor for us that Lieutenant General Vishen Singh, EBS and EBS, has been with us to discuss information warfare, a new paradigm. Recently, General Vishen has written a very thought-provoking research paper titled "Impact of Information Operations on Indian Internal Security Situation." Incidentally, this is going to be part of next strategic reflection 2024, which strives in collaboration with Causes Publishing. Chief Dushan has very kindly consented to spare his valuable time to share his thoughts on this subject. Today's proceedings will be in the form of an interaction between the two, between the good general and two viewers. We shall discuss what, how, and with. The implications of information warfare, with particular reference to challenges which it poses to India, and how do we prepare to deal with it? I propose that we have a discussion of 30 to 40 minutes, and thereafter we go for question answers. The general is concerned to take the questions relevant to the subject. To set the ball rolling, may I request you, General Dushan, to please explain the genesis of information warfare. And how it is impacting the outcome of some conflicts? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for calling me again on uh, Strive. Uh, it is a matter of privilege and honor to be with you. And uh, today, as you said, we are going to talk about a subject which is which is extremely important in the current context. Uh, the reason being that uh, we are witnessing this form of warfare. i would not say truly that it's a new form of warfare it is uh, sometimes i quoted as old uh, wine in a new bottle the only thing is the rapidity of uh, usage of this particular uh, strategy has increased manifold and that is because of tsunami in technological uh, developments or innovations and uh, what all is happening in technological world especially after the uh, after the i would say invention of the great chip because chip has actually reduced the world into a very small little hand which each one of us carries and 
it is uh, known as mobile. I feel at the root of information warfare is the mobile in the hand of every person today uh, who is there in the world across the globe. It's not only restricted to India, but India somehow becomes more vulnerable because of the fact that India has the largest number of mobile users, even if you compare it with the total population ratio. Even with that particular ratio, you will find that India, by and large, and, and I'm talking of the population which is actually uh, relevant for opinion making, relevant for uh, uh, forming narratives, forming perceptions, they all have uh, these uh, mobiles, including Sabjiwala, Thelewala, and uh, if you just go out on the street, you'll find a Sabjiwala putting a mobile next to his uh, ear and listening to some narrative or the other. And mostly you will find the narrative which picks up these people are negative narratives, uh, masala narratives, which are slightly, slightly more, uh, I would say, uh, you know, they attract attention immediately. And reason we by so you mean misinformation? Yeah, misinformation. I, I won't say it's a misinformation. It's a deliberate. It's a, a deliberate, deliberate act of creating a perception through half truths. There is always has to be some element of truth. Then only people will pick it up. Otherwise, people will not pick up. You know, it will feel that yes, he's he's talking the right thing. Unless I mean, if I go and say that you know, so and so, so and so, I died just now, twenty minutes back. Probably after five minutes, he'll know it's a fake news. But something which is based, let's say, uh, the government of India has now uh, announced a new rule by by which two uh, thousand, one thousand rupee notes are going to be banned. Now, this will be credible in the reason, uh, for the reason being that in the past, a similar thing has been done. So, it will be picked up immediately. And also, it will be many more handles absolutely simultaneously. And, and adding to this problem is the technology. Now, what is happening is that 20 people sitting together in various parts of the world, you know, somebody in America, somebody in Australia, somebody in India, can create revolutions today because of this digital... Uh, uh, phenomena called mobile warfare and uh, social media platforms. Uh, there is a there is a very good example of this uh, which happened in India in 2018. Uh, there was a group of people. Maske was the mastermind of this particular thing. He was he was in the US. He had a team of about 20 people across the globe, right? So uh, they had planned that they would create a Dalit revolution. And they had selected 14th April as the date, the date when uh, Bhimrao met with But it so happened that there was a particular action which took place on 3rd of April by the government, which was a very innocuous, it was not really a very uh, shattering kind of a decision related to Dalits. So they decided to prepone their, uh, you know, their model of uh, creating a revolution on 3rd of April. On 3rd of April, a tweet goes from Maske. It is picked up by those 20 guys. And then each one controls thousands of bots. Okay. Now, bots become the uh, become the uh, interface which is now multiplying this particular tweet. So, people in India and all targeted towards the Indian uh, social media platform. The nuclear vision is up. Yes. So it, it was like, a, you're absolutely right. It was like something chain reaction which happened. People came on the street in large numbers. If you all Take the, uh, the newspaper cut, uh, search of 3rd of April, you will realize how quickly this happened. I think it happened in, in a matter of 4 hours. In a, in a matter of 4 to 5 hours, people were on the street. When people were being asked as to why have you come, no, I got a message from someone. I mean, nobody was even aware that why they have come and who has called them. They realized it was a leaderless move. And the government was immediately able to clamp on. So the multiplicity of sources is a very major absolutely. source of war. Absolutely, the more you more you uh, post it on the social media, the more people will see it. And if it is linked to a issue which is a fault line of a country, I think it gets picked up that much faster because there is in yeah, because there is always inherently there are people who are looking for such information. So, uh, no, the, the recent campaign, constitution, constitution yeah, 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 absolutely. Constitution being uh, under danger, or uh, for that matter, uh, yeah, followed by NRC. NRC. 
even dalit yeah. reservation dalit it was it was same thing yeah. like, the same model was followed and then people pick it up and you are right that uh, uh, some uh, ruling, ruling party, party member said that we will correct like right. the that is policy. that is giving a chance to this masala or sometimes what happens is that a uh, event take place for provocation and the opposite party gets provocated it creates uh, a messaging which is even more provocative to the uh, other side and maybe to the entire nation's uh, general psyche and so therefore that picks up a much faster uh, uh, momentum the difference between 3rd april and this time dalit reservation was there was a leadership in in the april uh, 18 uh, uh, movement there were no leaders there were no one who came out and said that okay let's uh, march on otherwise that also would have become and that that was the lesson learned which they had for, uh, in april 18 and that is why you found the movements which were taking place of farmer nrc ca leaders that were who were actually now allowing them not to go back to their uh, to their uh, homes or you know back to back to normal work so so leadership is critical to this so if it is planned in a manner that there are there are leaders there are instruments which will motivate mobilize people you will find automatically information will spread like wildfire besides uh, say uh, social media which is a very very powerful tool absolutely normal media also is following in its track say some information is and some ngos correct like uh, jara soros foundation is spreading that you could Kind of a kind of a narrative, and yeah. and uh, the media media left left end up and they just yeah. yeah. You see, so the media is yes, third third element. Correct. You see, there are uh, various actors today in information world. One is the state, that is one state having uh, its national interest met through information warfare against another state, right? Uh, a good example of this is the U.S., China, uh, to some extent. Uh, i won't say to some extent to a large extent pakistan so these people are using even even uh, western media in general is is doing this kind of a uh, this kind of a information war independently that is even without the government of that particular country actually saying something there the angle of a third player comes in for example i quote buying of good media have you heard of this term buying of good media so china in 2018 bought off media in america for 6 billion dollar not only america world over so what what it did was it planted very credible people who were well known uh, figures in the media world as the proponents of its own uh, narrative narrative even in india there are lots of Yeah, are absolutely. Happening. So people, and, uh, absolutely. I, I mean, say uh, newspaper like New York Times or Economist yeah. or uh, Washington Post, which yeah. have got a great credibility, uh, they are lapping it up. Absolutely. See, what happens is Bunny does everything. Six billion is hell of a lot of money. Hell of a lot. And, and China could afford to spend that kind of money. And this is the figure of 2018. I am sure now there must be much more going on. I can uh, tell you that the uh, Chinese uh, uh, state. encourages people from think tanks in india to go there on scholarships study the chinese culture study the chinese way of uh, you know functioning behaving and expects in return that you know a positive narrative created by people from indians from the indians comes out of china comes out from there uh, scholarships are distributed at lip uh, as far as china is concerned It doesn't mind if Out of the uh, say X number of scholarships, if only eighty uh, percent, uh, sorry, ten percent are effectively propagating the Chinese narrative. The fact is, if mass is there, some people will definitely bend in and they will contribute towards the narrative of China. So therefore, uh, there are state actors. Then there are non-state actors, and I feel in future, in future we will have the non-state actors who will become the key player. example george soros example uh, ford foundation uh, ford foundation example elon musk elon. if he decides to switch off the starlink satellites all your uh, information warfare will come to a standstill 
and if he decides to create a narrative for example uh, i don't know will whether all of you have seen it recently he has, he has come out with a tweet it's high time that we come up with ai fashion have you seen that yes. in that what he has done he has really made a mockery of the entire world leaders i mean uh, getting no, and jo 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 biden is a live, live example of yes. uh, is uh, so, so, this attack so, so in this ai fashion he has put joe biden on a wheelchair you know a person it's a indirect attack on joe biden because he wants trump to win trump is in a fancy looking suit with a cowboy kind of an image and uh, barack obama has been projected quite well putin has been projected in a you know uh, kind of ladies dress so so all these things are there bill uh, clinton bill clinton has been pr projected in a you know in, in a ladies dress so what is all this this is all information warfare by independent i call it as super state actors now in future you we will find that the super state actors will start overriding over the state actors so that is something which we have to be very careful of take bill gates example now the vaccine war vaccine uh, yes, yes. you all know 2016 he gave out this thing that there would be vaccine there would be uh, viruses which would be globally impacting so therefore we must start working imagine 2016 and it actually happened in 2020 so so what do we read about this it means that super state actors are now working over time to create these this kind of corporate uh, okay is resulting into presently the uh, breakdown of microsoft i think that is again another example absolutely elon musk versus gates correct so 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 what what i was uh, uh, you know i'll put a, a real example on this i had gone about 4 days back i think a week back to pune to give a talk in a university and i normally talk about 40 year cycle of terrorism okay that's my one of my areas of uh, expertise so in this 40 years i'm talking about the modern era of terrorism otherwise there is a zero wave which is the ancient time ancient to, ancient time to about 150 170 years back so the first wave was called the anarchy anarchism you know the french revolution the russian revolution there was no uh, there was no kind of a, a, a structured ideology it was simply that the the, the ruler and the kings of that era reactionary yeah it was reactionary so it was anarchism which was prevailing all over loot etc crime all those things were happening but it did not win the uh, narrative what actually happened was that the king reformed themselves the emperor reformed themselves and ultimately the state gave way next cycle was the nationalism cycle which was lasted for about 40 years and that was around the uh, second world war second, second world war time uh, here you found that people started rising up against the colonial power this is the only way where the Where, where the so-called so violent groups won over the uh, state, which was, if it was a colonial state, that doesn't matter. As a as a concept, the state lost that. What also it proves is that if the narrative is very strong, if the narrative is rising from the people on the ground, it is. Like Algeria, I think, is a life. Algeria is a very good example. The entire Algeria and uh, Vietnam. Yes, Vietnam. Yes. in fact india iran iran in the entire west asia africa everywhere colonials were uh, thrown out of the power barring the war or there so uh, after the uh, nationalism wala ideology there was the emergence of communism and the reason for that was well people got the power i mean uh, those who were struggling for freedom they got the power but they did really they didn't have that you know expertise to rule uh, over themselves and as a result inequalities grew poverty grew further they were already in abject poverty the poverty became further uh, pronounced so therefore people started rising up talking about inequality uh, lenin etc karl marx they got prominence and then you had terrorism being promoted by communist ideology whether it is latin america whether it was africa whether it was Yeah, whether it was India, yeah. India in yeah. those uh, period, it was around 60s. Uh, Naxal, uh, Naxal movement. Naxal movement. Charizan, absolutely. It is not to say that there are no overlap. Like currently, also we have some kind of a Naxal movement taking place. But but that's an exception rather than a generic. After, uh, in fact, communism was the shortest uh, the movement because it fell. The most uh, prominent propagator of this particular ideology was USSR. and the ussr sank in 1990 moment the ussr sank 
everything all over the world people started adapting to a different ideology which is a religious ideology and in the religious ideology, religious ideology you found that uh, it was the islamic ideology which was which was uh, kind of coming to prominence all over and the trigger for this was the iranian revolution iranian revolution gave this idea to the people that religious ideology religiously driven movement will succeed and hence started the you know in the 80s we had the mujahid war in afghanistan and then the whole thing iraq iran syria and reaction to it to another kind of a thing also started so, so therefore now you find that jnk for example uh, although not religious it is termed as ethno nationalistic but somewhere in the grounding it has that the narrative of uh, you know two two nation theory which pakistan believes in that uh, all islamic uh, areas in fact when the partition was taking place as you are well aware uh, they wanted all the states which were uh, yes. which were uh, predominantly muslim to be part of pakistan imagine hyderabad in south or azamgarh in the uh, in, in the uh, azamgarh here azamgarh the uttar pradesh uttar pradesh uttar pradesh junagadh i mean the country would have been a mess all over Splitters. and then they wanted a corridor between uh, east west pakistan which was you know called more that more yeah, than you would have had a mini israel here you know with corridor i mean india would have been split with corridor coming in between and we had to you know cross over the corridor it would have been a very funny situation thank god mercifully this all these didn't happen but the fact is the religious terrorism has now gained prominence and unfortunately it has crossed the 40 year mark so therefore david rapport's theory of 40 year cycle somehow seems to be uh, falling on its head especially with the religious ideology so uh, so what what i'm trying to say is that there are people who are being trying but this information warfare is essentially uh, they can take a narrative and build that and there it is not necessarily that it is religious it could be social it could be Uh, inequality, constitutional, absolutely. Say, say in, uh, oppression against one particular ethnic group. So it could be anything. The key to information warfare is identifying fault lines fault in lines. your adversary. Yes. So it is said and believed that India has one of the largest fault lines. Uh, as so what are the challenges in your uh, as, as, as assessment as of India? India? As far as India is concerned, in my view, the major challenges are, of course, the religious. Uh, Divide. divide which is uh, which is very prominent but is it getting accelerated because of the change in the, the population ratio absolutely and uh, uh, the only uh, further complicating matter and this is that there are pockets of concentrations so that impacts also on the outcomes of uh, the elections etc and people then indulge in uh, activities which may get further Uh, pronounced in creating a information warfare you know uh, then then you have the next is the language divide you find that people uh, fighting over languages then you have uh, tribal divides people fighting over uh, their tribal rights etc in india uh, you also have uh, this thing about inequality in distribution of gains wealth in the sense that certain states say that Okay, we earn more, so we should get in proportion to what we get. South North divide. Yeah, I would say South North. Say for example, Mumbai. Mumbai is country. Maharashtra is contributing, say, twenty uh, percent of the overall GDP. Then we should get back twenty percent of the spoils. Then it's Karnataka ministers. Same. So, so you know, people pick up these narratives, and then the external agencies, which are in support of the internal uh, people. they then come together and create this narrative war which becomes very difficult to counter by any government forces i am just saying that if the roles were reversed let's say congress would have found it very difficult to counter it because everybody tries to find a narrative which is resonates with people corruption yeah corruption is the one issue Uh, of I mean, during the uh, uh, upa tour regime yeah, that, that was the thing and that was narrative was built on absolutely that. but now you find that the corruption narrative doesn't Hold, because uh, the government has taken, I think, special care that at least minimal of corrupt corruption may. See, you can't remove corruption. Even Japan has a huge. Uh, yes, a lot of absolutely. All those in the U.S. there are so much of corruption. It is only when the when the when the when a particular 
fault line becomes too overwhelming that things become dangerous for us so uh, the fault line is the first challenge as far as we are concerned then our geographical adversaries who are there that is the second challenge we have pakistan and china both on our border and let not means words that our adversary in the north and adversary in the west we all know that who are our adversary and what happens in this case is i'll give you one example and then we can move on to the next uh, issue there was a see modi visited uh, uh, tamil nadu in 2017 or 18 so there was a narrative which was created called go back home in tamil nadu it was created by the locals fine but external agents among the external agencies the maximum tweets and retweets came from pakistan the, to, to tell you the exact percentages it was 48 but 48 percent from india 32 percent from pakistan and rest were in minor uh, you, in your research paper you have alluded i have alluded to this so what does it what does it imply to us the challenges of information warfare are not as simple as people perceive it is being built like a it's it's been built with so many multiple players actually acting against the country and trying to somehow weaken the country although there are vested interest people inside our country also i think it's high time we leave national the pandemic uh, yeah. response to pandemic is one such thing i mean uh, i have quoted in my book also that uh, what happened after covid despite india faring possibly the best in terms of per uh, capita or in terms of per 1 1 one million uh, casualty we were we were i think one of the best in the uh, in the world but yet we were being uh, derided based on the total numbers obviously if we have 140 uh, crore people living in our country accordingly the numbers would seem large to you but as a percentage as a management thing and then there was some some things that only only, only parts training will be shown correct not the real movie absolutely absolutely so teams would also be there and if you look at the uh, us you know they stored the body bodies almost for a year they couldn't find place to bury them so they were kept in the uh, talking against uh, in our uh, vaccines but modern and pfizer uh, yes the gates wanted them correct and, and uh, these bodies were kept in the uh, trucks uh, the cold uh, cold ca- cold transportation trucks for almost a year now nobody would talk about that so i have taken i mean picked up photographs of that and put it in my book tell me a very interesting thought coming to my mind in a response strategy when you are talking about these things initiative will always be of with the perpetrator yeah now if that be the case what should be the counter strategy whether to keep creating new narratives to the thought the before the narrative is built or it is that you keep reacting to the uh, so it's not a, a black and white yes and no okay. answer to your question the reason being that uh, a such strategies are never found in written documents that is one thing so a country cannot dictate that this is my strategy for countering information warfare generally they are kept under the table reason being that nobody wants to be associated that this narrative is emanating from china or india or us so that deniability factor and attributability factor is very important so for that the policy cannot be put in black and white now how do countries get over it of course it is normally given to their so called uh, you know intelligence agencies uh, uh, covert operations people and uh, countries conduct so such like things are there only country which has put covert operation as part of its policy is the us and that it did it in 1948 or so However, it put a right here for international peace. If we require to conduct a covert operation, it can be done. So, so that became a policy with a right here of international peace. Okay, that kind of a black and white laying down has not been done by any other country, including China. What China does is that 
they commissioned those two i mean they commissioned a study by pla which came up with the three warfare strategy which is essentially information warfare legal psychological and public opinion which is media basically so uh, what they did was the fact that they commissioned a think tank to come up here like here like commissioned a think tank to come up with a policy on non kinetic uh, kind of warfare which is now known as the warfare strategy is some kind of a recognition that they were thinking of doing something like this because it was the pla which commissioned it so if the pla has commissioned it which means that pla has the intention but it can always say yes, that the study which we have ordered but that's not our policy so but it serves as a guideline for them to act the way they want they are acting today also the unrestricted warfare book now it has been written by two colonels we don't know how much of the content has been written actually by the two colonels or or it has been uh, you know a group of people who come up with that particular book because whatever is happening today by or whatever actions china is taking today it's all based on this tell me uh, this brings out a very interesting thing you said that really uh, as uh, uh, come out with two of the strategies and all these things to counter mission warfare should it be a whole of the nation approach or it should be a given responsibility to the tribal service organizations or individual services should a straight one line answer is it has to be a whole of the nation approach two three reasons first i will tell you the conceptual reason and then i'll tell you the ex- experience reasons uh, it was given uh, if you look at the information warfare landscape you will find it includes everything it includes economic angle it includes military angle it includes social angle it includes uh, geographical issues like cartographic warfare etc so if you see the entire domain of diplomacy information military economic is falling part of your information warfare including diplomacy so if you have to tackle this kind of a warfare you need to tackle them from all these domains so when you tackle them from all these domains conceptually it has to be a whole of nation approach the countries which have gone wrong in this are israel and morocco israel has relied heavily on idea to launch a country uh, that was my next question yeah. that from these two ongoing conflicts what are the lessons yeah. so, you have given very nice yeah. so so israel has always relied heavily on idea to carry out its counter uh, information operation that is where i think they have gone wrong because anything coming from a military uh, source it is also always perceived as you know, it is always perceived negatively but if it comes from let's say diverse sources it comes from think tanks it comes from uh, people common people uh, youtube uh, videos shorts etc people tend to lap them more for example today the electronic media earlier it, we said that the print media has gone out of circulation now it is the electronic media now the electronic media is going out of circulation and it is the social media which is take over uh, uh, viewership of electronic media national channel may be just in thousand a youtube uh, social media channel may be in lakhs or millions that is the kind of power which people, people are attributing such a youtube uh, platforms which in my opinion must be taken with a uh, word of caution because youtube has all kinds of people there are people who speak the truth who speak the correct uh, language but there are people who correct fact there are people who, who distort facts uh, create half truths they are paid they are uh, they are they are influencers we are on social media very interesting just thought came to my mind uh, as far as china is china is this with the and this time you don't, don't see any you uh, chinese talking to people and all those things and that they are very surreptitiously they are doing it whereas pakistan is doing very very openly that they say a chap like shoaib choudhry or uh, arzu kazmi and all those things they are they are far more uh, uh, popular in india than for i'm out he is out so far more popular than i'm here uh-huh. so uh, 
there is no more problem and they try to if you if one reads between the lines they do try to give it appears as if it's been uh, say paid media for the government they they just start but somewhere in between very very surreptitiously they are trying to say yeah i mean uh, I, i as i told you earlier also that china has been very active in the indian media uh, and i'll quote you a very personal simple uh, personal example personal life example you know there was a visit by a, a delegation uh, way back in 2016 uh, where in the western theater commander uh, was visiting our country i'm the chinese western uh, theater commander uh, yeah, uh, wang yongchi uh, he was the person when we were talking to him uh, he said you know uh, they get upset with the indian media which is very hyper so if anything happens uh, you know suddenly the entire media rises up against china or against pakistan no that's not the kind of uh, uh, behavior which a media must have so imagine in 2016 they were very conscious of this fact that the indian media is uh, hyperbole whenever something comes about uh, china etc and 2017 lo behold local map same theater same theater theater commander, theater commander to talking to us in this manner that means they were conscious of this fact that indian media needs to be managed and that's what they started doing from i, I told you 2018 they bought off good media 2016 is this interaction dollars uh, 2016 december is exactly the time when this particular interaction is taking place casually all over uh, the country when these guys are visiting which means that they have, they have become very serious about information warfare and and because of that they have developed an expertise where they can slip in like you said they can slip in the narrative which will go in favor of uh, the china like for example it, currently you will find that the chinese are trying to look for positive relationship between uh, india and china and so is possibly india doing a similar thing we are not openly coming against each other uh, if you look at the statements which are being made by either side uh, for example when uh, uh, prime minister modi congratulated taiwan on uh, taking over of uh, the, uh, the new, new uh, prime minister uh, new president of taiwan there was a there was a spokesperson which uh, came from, uh, came from china side and said that we do not uh, appreciate such we believe in one china policy and one china policy anybody against one china but it was a you know very simple spokesperson coming out giving a statement and that's it that was the end of the whole thing similarly when uh, uh, prime minister modi became prime minister for the third time there was no congratulatory message from the Ch- chinese side we did not make much of a uh, right cry about it there spoke about oh, pakistan we we mentioned yeah, yeah. But, but but we but we didn't do any uh, you will cry as far as china was concerned uh, probably, probably probably the, Ch- the, the chinese way of doing coercive uh, sorry uh, information warfare is very different from the other they first do a coercive economic Uh, action. action and that economic action further transform transforms into information warfare you take anywhere sri lanka maldives they have uh, interfered into elections of uh, bangladesh sri lanka maldives uh, all around us myanmar also uh, they, <laughs> they tried to interfere with us also so it was there are there are there are uh, there, there are, there are uh, evidences which say that uh you know possibly china was deeply interested in not having modi back as uh, as prime minister so possibility of that cannot be ruled out we, we don't have very specific uh, you know i mean it needs more research to actually track the trail that is one of the advantages beauty of information warfare that deniability and attributability which i tell me one thing it's an interesting question my mind there are a lot of uh, people in india they say the china has occupied so much of the area of us whereas lac is not defined lac actually is not defined as yet absolutely is it part of a information warfare yes 
see information warfare is going on as far as india is concerned with china on a continuous basis i mean four lists of chinese name of arunachal pradesh 160 odd places being listed in chinese uh, cartographic uh, onslaught uh, imagery related youtube programs emanating from india i happen to be part of one of the uh, such programs and there you found that you know imagery is being how do we know that that imagery is accurate or correct they are taking advantage of the fact that currently since nothing is defined accurately on ground they can start defining things accurately on ground and put that as a claim you know what is happening in south china sea is what they are doing along our borders they are slowly creeping in somebody may call it as Uh, salami slicing somebody may call it as creep in two step forward one step backward these kind of things are uh, being uh, adopted by them and simultaneously what they are doing they are investing in infrastructure they are investing in uh, border villages which are uh, which are ziyagang which are ha uh, ziyagang which are dual purpose in the sense that they are likely to be used for military operations plus they have created an act which now Uh, actually uh, makes it a responsibility of those villagers to defend defend so that means even as a civilian will be forced to defend that particular uh, uh, he becomes a stakeholder yeah, he becomes a stakeholder for defending and to oversee them they have got the pap guys they have got the uh, the border defense regiment people living with them so this kind of a uh, war is going on it's continuous it is not going to stop what do we have to do in this case we also have to be active up on our feet and start doing similar things you know you'll be happy my my next question is that uh, what should be the way ahead and should there be some kind of a dedicated organization created for this kind of a thing and, and if that how technology can be uh, say used uh, effectively to tackle this uh, as far as uh, my suggestion has been that information warfare cyber warfare or cyber security to be precise is no more a domain of the armed forces it is all encompassing whole of a nation approach there is a need for a centralized control which synergizes the narrative which synergizes our approach towards adversarial campaigns against us whether it is external or whether it is internal with internal one has to be little more careful with the external one has to be little more i would say aggressive uh, because internal that's a good point because internally uh, you have to be careful because it's our own people we need to we need to get them together and not get them apart so that is the uh, philosophy as far as external is concerned we need to get them apart and not get them together example tibet should be considered not as let me put it uh, very frankly that you know china china's claim of sovereignty uh, to tibet should be you know fought aggressively by us and, and uh, you have written a fantastic paper on this incidentally uh, just to share uh, with you that uh, your paper has generated a huge uh, reaction from people they are really appreciated that paper on uh, indo tibet uh, relations uh, and to close us i mean i i did not undermine your contribution you have also contributed and uh, tara did a, a wonderful work on getting this entire, getting that entire paper into some kind of a focus more focused uh, we were actually giving recommendations across the board she focused it on to tibet only which was i think in a way right issue so we need to highlight these issues ourselves also we cannot now be a mute mute sufferers of information warfare and cyber so warfare there is some kind of a network uh, yeah. uh, organization be created i i had recommended a, a, in fact between the two either a ministry a separate ministry not information and broadcasting ministry cannot tackle this it has to be a separate ministry tackling the information warfare issue and headed by people who are experts in this civilians have to be brought in in a big way 
agencies must be working in a manner that the the military component of this does not work at cross purposes with the civilian uh, NTR yeah. Yeah. so so those kind like ndr i mean there are a number of organizations dealing with it uh, in my book i was trying to list the agencies and i found that it is virtually not possible to list the kind of agencies uh, uh, agencies which can actually be but apex yeah apex has to be one uh, or the other option is create a create a, a vertical under an nsa who should be called i say he should be called nsa national security advisor information and cyber cyber warfare and under him then all these uh, agencies must start creeping in the cds would be the overall head of the uh, the information and cyber security of the defense forces and likewise the civilian arena you could have people heading these uh, various agencies one has to go into lot of detail if i have to explain the entire structure so structure is definitely required that is uh, that is my view as far as uh, the second issue which you had uh, said was along with the structure uh, responses no uh, response i say in this before you take those portion one interesting thing that you said that internally you have to yeah. bring them together yeah. and external you have to put the put the bubble yeah. so now when you are doing internal all that really wala sabhi wala kaan laga ke jo sun rahe hain unko aap kaise ha to हमारे यहाँ सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है और जिस तरह मैं आप बात कर रहा हूँ उससे आप समझ गए होंगे कि मैं क्या हेल्प करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ देखिए ऐसा है कि टारगेट ऑडियंस बहुत जरूरी है टारगेट ऑडियंस की एनालिसिस बहुत जरूरी है टारगेट ऑडियंस किस तरह की बातें किस तरह के लोगों से सुनना चाहता है वो बहुत जरूरी है तो जब आपकी नेरेटिव बनाए जाते हैं जब आपके लोग इसको मीडिया में ले जाते हैं या अलग अलग प्लेटफॉर्म पे आगे ले जाते हैं उनको अपने टारगेट ऑडियंस को ध्यान में रखना पड़ता है तो अगर मैं खान सर जैसा कोई आदमी सेलेक्ट करूं और वो फिर टांगा वाला इनका वाला रिक्शा वाला इनके साथ इतना बढ़िया रिलेट करेंगे पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में हो या लैंग्वेज इज इम्पॉर्टेंट रिलेट द इन्फ्लुएंसर की रिलेटेबिलिटी विद द टारगेट इज इम्पोर्टेंट यानी कि वो इन्फ्लुएंसर ऐसा लगना चाहिए कि उन्हीं के बीच से उभरा हुआ है ऐसा ना लगे कि वो मतलब यू नो सूट बूट पहन करके लुटन मीडिया से आकर के इन्फ्लुएंस करने की वो अपने अपने टारगेट ऑडियंस के लिए ठीक है बट जो टारगेट ऑडियंस इंडिया में है उसके लिए हमको कहानी उसी तरह से बनानी पड़ेगी जो रील्स बना रहे हैं छोटे छोटे दो दो मिनट की एक एक मिनट की जो रील्स बनाते हैं वो भी ऐसा लगना चाहिए कि उन्हीं के लोगों से आ रही है और ऐसा नहीं कि ये हो नहीं सकता हो सकता है हमने उसको उस तरह से सोचना ही नहीं सोचना ही नहीं शुरू किया है फॉर एग्जाम्पल जब ये एन आर सी का वो चल रहा था सी ए का तो उसमें एक आई बी का लड़का था जो कि जिसको कि मार दिया था लोगों ने और उसको गंदे नाले में फेंका था तो एटी, एटी, हाँ अस्सी बार उसको चाकू से मारा गया था और उसके बाद जो अगले दिन लोगों ने देखा जो वहाँ सुबह नाले के पास जाते हैं आपको मॉर्निंग रिचुअल्स के लिए तो एक हाथ दिख रहा था ऐसे नाले के ऊपर बॉडी नहीं दिख रही थी सिर्फ एक हाथ दिख रहा था तो लोगों ने क्या किया उसके हाथ को रस्सी बांध करके खींचा और बाहर ले गए अब इस इस पर्टिकुलर इंसिडेंट को अगर कोई ऐसा इन्फ्लुंसर जो कि बताता कि क्या गलत काम हो रहा है वहां पे उन्हीं के तरह देखने वाला उसी की तरह करने वाला बातचीत करने वाला आदमी और तो मैं बात कर रहा हूँ मैं बात कर रहा हूँ कि जो नेरेटिव आपको वो करना है कि भाई स्टेम करना है कि आपको उस नेरेटिव को किस तरह से ले जाते हैं हम ये नहीं बोल रहे हैं कि आप उसको भड़काइए ना हम ये बोल रहे हैं कि भाई इस तरह की वारदातें हो रही है तो कृपया करके आप लोग इस तरह के काम बंद करिए और लेटेस्ट कम ऑन द टेबल बातचीत कर देखिए मैसेजिंग ये होती है मैसेजिंग का कंटेंट बनाना हमारा काम है कंटेंट इस तरह से बनाए कि हम एक मैसेज ऑफ पीस दे मैंने क्या बोला इट हैज टू बी केयरफुली क्राफ्टेड टू बी इंटीग्रेटिंग एंड नॉट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इज द वन विच इज क्रिएटिंग ऑल दिस प्रॉब्लम सो पीपल आर यूजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी इंटरनेट ऑफ थिंग्स इन सब चीज़ों का इस्तेमाल इसीलिए किया जा रहा है कि 
कंटेंट क्रिएशन बहुत आसान हो गया है ऑगमेंटेड रियलिटी है डी फेक्स बताना बहुत आसान हो गया आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस है तो बंदे को ही पूरा बदल दिया है यानी कि मैं हूँ अभी मैं ये आपसे बात कर रहा हूँ वो कोई आदमी अगर चाहे तो इसी के ऊपर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस से वो अपना नेरेटिव फैला देगा मेरे नाम के आगे वेरी इफेक्टिवली बिकॉज द अदर साइड इज यूजिंग इट सो वी ऑल्सो नीड हमारे को भी जरूरत है वी ऑल्सो नीड टू एक्चुअली स्टार्ट एक्सप्लोरिंग द टेक्नोलॉजी टू यूज इट पॉजिटिवली एंड द लास्ट पॉइंट इन रिस्पॉन्स इज इंटेलिजेंस वी हैव टू लुक एट आर एडवर्सरीज इवन इंटरनली वी मस्ट लुक वॉट इज ग्रोइंग अप इन द सोसाइटी कि प्रॉब्लम शुरू होने से पहले ही उसका हम सॉर्ट आउट कर दें या उसको हम उस सोल्यूशन ले आए ताकि पब्लिक भड़के ना we we can take some questions do you have some questions yeah. there is a question it has been seen negative information travels faster than positive so how to counter jitendra chauhan has asked ha bilkul ye ye to humne baat chit bhi ki thi and second question is correction is Paid media and NGOs are playing a major role to create a false narrative. How it should be countered? Look, the first question, which is negative news, fast goes. So, what is the way to counter it? 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 एजेंसीज होनी चाहिए जिनके पास फैक्ट्स की करेक्ट ऑथेंटिसिटी के साथ आ, क्या बोलते हैं कैपेबिलिटी हो इमीजिएटली काउंटर रेस्पॉन्स करने के अगर आप डिले कर देंगे रेस्पॉन्स तो वो जो काउंटर नेगेटिव ट्रेंड नेरेटिव है डैमेज कर जाएगा उसके बाद आप कितना भी कितना भी बोलते रहे लोग बोलेंगे भैया जो लोग जिन्होंने इन्फ्लुएंस होना है वो इन्फ्लुएंस हो जाते हैं और और ये जनरली देखा गया है कि जब भी कोई मेजर इवेंट होना होता है तब ये होता है ताकि शॉर्ट पीरियड रहे रेस्पॉन्स के लिए जब तक आप रेस्पॉन्ड करें तब तक वो इवेंट ही खत्म हो गया तो उसकी जो डैमेज थी वो हो गई है तो मेरा कहने का मतलब है कि वही इंटेलिजेंस की बात की थी मैंने कि आपको देखना पड़ेगा कि कहाँ से नेगेटिव नेगेटिव उठने के चांसेस हैं अब इस समय अगर मान लीजिए कश्मीर का इलेक्शन उन्हें अनाउंस किया अनाउंस तो नहीं हुआ है बट सुप्रीम कोर्ट की वो है कि भाई सितंबर तक आपको तो अब सबको पता चल गया कि कश्मीर में अगला इलेक्शन होने वाला है आपके जो नेशनल इलेक्शन अभी हुए हैं नेशनल इलेक्शन में कश्मीर की जो वोटिंग परसेंटेजेस थी कई यस यस कई कई राज्यों से ज्यादा थी कई राज्यों में चालीस परसेंट अड़तालीस परसेंट थी यहाँ पे दबा के वोटिंग हुई है तो ये एक नेरेटिव है जो कि पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ गया है ऑब्वियसली हमें एक्सपेक्ट करना चाहिए कि पाकिस्तान इसके ऊपर कुछ ना कुछ तो तो ये जो इंटेलिजेंस वाला जो जो एंगल है वो हमको प्रोएक्टिवली यूज करना पड़ेगा ताकि हमारे नेरेटिव पहले बाहर निकल जाए अगर हमारे नेरेटिव नहीं निकले हम वेट करेंगे दुश्मन के नेरेटिव को या दुश्मन के एक्शन को करने के लिए दूसरा जो चीज है जो भी नेरेटिव आप गवर्नमेंट मीडिया से या फिर प्रो गवर्नमेंट आई वोट से गवर्नमेंट मीडिया बट प्रो सपोर्टर्स ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर थाट प्रोसेस नेशनलिज्म वगैरह जिसकी बात करते हैं अगर वो नेरेटिव को जमीन के एक्शन से बेस करेंगे तो उसकी काउंटर करना बहुत मुश्किल होता है यानी कि अगर मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि हम सबको इंटीग्रेट करेंगे तो और जमीन पर हम कुछ और काम कर रहे हैं तो वो नेरेटिव नहीं चलेगा आपका जो नेरेटिव है उसको जमीनी नेरेटिव जमीनी एक्शन से कितना भी आप कर लीजिए उसको लड़ना एक बहुत ही मुश्किल है इट्स अ वेरी चैलेंजिंग टास्क यू हैव टू फाइंड एवरी टाइम सम वेज एंड मीन समाइम्स यू हैव टू एक्चुअली ब्लॉक इट लाइक वॉट द चाइनीज डू समाइम्स यू मे हैव टू ब्लॉक इट इफ इट इज गोइंग टू क्रिएट टू मच ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर internal security or national uh, external security the the, the the second question is uh, about bot media now uh, bot media is a reality 
you can't you now uh, uh, you mentioned 6 billion dollars <laughs> you, you can't be sure that is one figure by now the figure must be rolling. must be some 60 billion yeah, roll, i haven't said 60 billion but it will be rolling because everybody is doing this kind of a thing whether it is russia whether it is america uh, this kind of uh, buying good media they call it as the, the term is buying good media that means media which is good to you uh, this will this this trend will continue uh, we need to be discreet about our own actions it cannot be laid down as a policy that we will do a b c d it is well understood that all of being heard our national interest must be in so anything is required in terms of interest we must undertake that action like what shri jayashankar ji said that you know our foreign minister that if i need or to keep the well being of my uh, uh, people then i will go to go to a place where i get the best and the cheapest okay. so we went there similarly here if we have to if we have to undertake certain actions we must undertake without blowing our trumpet that's the way i would look at it there is a question from ram pratap singh are poverty unemployment and illegal immigration major challenges to information in india any fault line any fault line any, any, kind of fault. any fault line and these are major fault line unemployment and you know uh, the fact is we tend to get into the comparative battle you know comparative battle means uh, there is so much of unemployment in china there is so much of unemployment in pakistan we are much less this is where we suddenly go wrong why the people of india are not interested what is happening uh, what is the state of unemployment at place a or place b we need to counter their unemployment or whichever grievance is there by actions on the ground and propagating those actions aggressively through your own influences so if we say that we are making concerted effort despite all these problems that will probably sell more it is difficult to sell but that's the only way to do it so now we'll take two last questions one is rishi atre has asked a question ministry of information warfare would it be under the ministry of defense or ministry of information technology if there were to be uh, vertical under the nsa what would be the relation to the cyber command of ids okay so this is a good question if it is a ministry then aggregation will be under the ministry and uh, these pe- uh, the people who are on the uh, in the other agencies would have would be coordinated by the ministry Uh, it will be a separate ministry it can't be under mod or it can't be under reason being that it has it has to work across the ministries to get get its job done for example if it has to create a narrative about say uh, economic issue now it must be able to interact with the ministry of finance to get the right figures see anything which is emanating from say white sources must be backed by correct facts it cannot be based on half truths that logic we cannot apply anything which is originated to the source anything which is originated let's say through an influencer you could still afford to have some amount of uh, you know uh, aberrations there saying that you know this guy is an and deniability also and, and then there is a there is a deniability angle into that uh, as far as uh, nsa wala model is concerned in nsa model i had uh, i had uh, remark that there would be a separate nsa, NSA. not that this nsa will be controlling they will yeah. coordinate among yeah. themselves yeah. as to what yeah. they are doing or the yeah. other nsa yeah. the, the current nsa can tell him that this is the way we want information in cyber war to answer. it's something like in district of uh, defense you have a defense yeah. secretary yeah. and there's business yeah. production yeah. like yeah. yeah. different verticals and the minister yeah. but now uh, people are talking that because we are having some issues about you know uh, procurements etc especially with the army is, is that you know there is a need for us to create a third third no not third one put it under ministry of commerce and trade yes because that they are more uh, competent enough to actually look into atmanir bharta uh, procurement acquisitions etc there was a question from aklain kumar singh i, I just don't see i it has just is, is gone Technology. Yeah, it is there. Technology, uh, social media has become the primary tool of psyops. What would be the impact on rank and file during military operations? That's a very interesting. Question. You see, uh, whenever we talk of information warfare agencies, or uh, we say that you know we have to create a structure, there are two major 
vertical than this and uh, i'm forgetting the page number you can go in my book i have created exactly this this thing and this is not taken out from my mind this has been taken out from a, from a brilliant uh, scholar or i would say he was actually the ceo of asia news network a uh, youngster must be about 38 39 years old Uh, don't don't that, don't, 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 don't uh, deprecate yourself. You are you, 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 you can come out with your original ideas. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, there is an internal information war and there is an external information war. I won't say war, operation. Sorry, operation. my my mistake. Operations which need to be taken concurrently. The internal information operation is for your own people, for your own organization. How should your organization view things? so that their motivation level don't go down their morale doesn't go down especially for the military forces and the security forces so that, that means a little more interactive uh, yeah. yeah. between commanding officer Absolutely. and uh, rank even rank. from the top down top even down. from let's say the chief and below they should be sending out these messages yes. which are not seen to the public but these are known to the people inside your inside your organization which may be backed by very hard facts etc which cannot be actually you know something like what china does you know no, no, it's, it's interesting thing you had mentioned there was, there was some question about agnihir uh, martyrdom of the suddenly the agency reacted very very quickly army uh, reacted and it died down absolutely it died down otherwise it has evolved into a very major correct set a discontent but currently what is happening is that you know you don't have that professional uh, yes. element there within each of these organization which can quickly counteract these kind of a messages i mean with facts etc available to them at the back of an back in back in call uh, maybe ai would help retrieving these facts from the government data i mean the ags branch for example if it has the data unfortunate thing is that since we are still in that uh, uh, you know we have not fully digitized we have not fully become uh, integrated uh, in terms of technology the data takes time to collect at ags branch or at very yes, yes. if it is command it will take some time so you may not get the latest data so to get the latest data you have to make literally some effort and that's why it took almost i think uh, uh, about 12 to 12 hours or so for them to collect the data and then later on came to light and, and it should be online yeah later on came to we pick up a button correct. later on came to light that it was 1.6 crore which is uh, in the pipeline or which has already been given to him that particular family in fact the problem became after that <laughs> that the father and, 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 and this is not the uh, by the current uh, army formations or current army hierarchy this problem has been there since independence processing delays have been there since independence so why suddenly you create these kind of narratives which weaken the country's uh, uh, country's fabric social fabric these are straight hits we look at kargil the kind of cases which continued even after uh, Kargil was over for next three to four years. Uh, Starting with coffee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the parents were uh, not happy. Some in some cases, the wives were not happy. So it is all mix of a social problems which get into this. Social bureaucracy. Absolutely. So there are the bureaucratic problems. Processing takes time. You have made the rules that unless I get uh, post mortem report, we, uh, you cannot release the fund. Who has made these rules? Now, Now uh, Vishen, uh, thanks, Atan. I think it's a the lovely discussion we had, and, and uh, all it is left for me on behalf of the entire team of Strive and uh, my audience. Big, big thank you to for sharing your valuable time. I know you are very very busy. Thank you, sir. Uh, but uh, keep, keep coming more thank often, thank you, sir. And uh, we we'll keep disturbing you. And uh, so. Uh, audience uh, few, few things, things which emerge in today's discussion which are very very important one is that fault lines, fault lines. We, we have, have to identify, to identify fault, fault lines so that, that we can address them. one second, second thing is that the response has to be quick if you allow it to say rest up for some time it snowballs into a major issue third use of technology to see, see to it that, that your response becomes real time, time. The, the use of technology, technology is very important fourth internal and external interventions, interventions both from outside to be 
encountered and for us to be sent to respond to them, both have to be a, a proper organizational structure has to be created. So there has to be an apex body to be created, which should be at the highest level. It should be a parallel let's say, to be created. And all that thing has to be seen. One important thing which in our discussion uh, implied geopolitical situation has to be studied continuously, regularly, 24 7 into 365. So that a small event happening in Palestine and suddenly Palestine, Zindabad can create havoc into this country. So, so therefore, therefore, or some boys going to Russia, Russia in some mistaken the motives they, and they get stuck. And uh, although, although they have won their own by, uh, 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 violation, but then uh, it is being said that they have won, so they should be brought back. All this thing and simultaneously training of our own people interaction within the, the unit and the organization so that these things are addressed in uh, Please enjoy this discussion and we assure you that we continue to make more such discussions which touch each one of us. All you have to do is subscribe, like and share whatever we are seeing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.